Today we're testing out another marine grade battery like the Epic. This is a 12 volt, 314 amp hour battery by SOK. And they've always made like steel case batteries where they have a steel box, they throw some cells in there, super simple, super durable, but they're not waterproof. But this one is, and it's fireproof, and it has a Victron communication, it's heated, and the surge capacity they're saying is 800 amps. But those features are pretty expensive, so this one costs the same as an Epic battery. It's off by a small amount, but they're practically the same price per watt hour and there's quite a few differences so we're gonna cover that in this video but realize that these things cost quite a bit and for a lot of you guys if you don't need Victron communication you can find a waterproof heated battery with Bluetooth pretty easily and if you need more surge capacity just buy more cheap batteries I love these high quality batteries with communication but a lot of you guys probably don't need it but if you want it and you have Victron this is how you do it or with an epic battery now yesterday I did a capacity test and it pulled 330 amp hours. With all these new features and the Victron communication, you have to test everything because sometimes they screw it up. That's a pretty boring case, but they do have mounting holes. On the Epic batteries, they're in the front and back, but this one only has them on the sides. And it also comes with the brackets, so you can screw these things into the ground. Now this big piece of metal is actually a heat sink that connects to the BMS. And this is the same design that the Epic uses. And then down here we have the main on and off switch, and then we have a state of charge indicator. And over here we have the communication ports. And this is where you connect your Victron equipment. Now something we need to test is the surge capacity because they say on the data sheet it can do 800 amps for five seconds. But on the product page it says 800 amps for 10 seconds. So we're gonna have to connect this to the surge station, but first we need to charge it up because this thing just got off the capacity tester. So let's add some chargers and see what happens. The power switch is not taking it out of safety mode enough to charge it up, unfortunately. So we need to use a power supply. There we go. And now we're charging with 140 amps. Now we're going to test out the Bluetooth app because I think it's pretty good and a lot of companies could learn from this. So first you press search, battery comes up, you click it. You get the voltage, the current, the state of charge, and if there's any error codes. If we press enter, we'll get more information. And if you want a lot of information, you press info, press read, and then it shows you everything. And it works every time and it connects so fast. It's just so nice when something works every time and it's easy, I love that. Anyways, we'll come back when this is fully charged. Now our meter is connected and we're gonna hit it with 500 amps just to see what happens. Ooh, almost 600 amps, that's good. So that was almost 20 seconds, not bad. Oh, and it turned itself back on. And it turned itself off, which means you could probably use it as a cranking battery. It seems like the duration both times was about the same. So I'm gonna make a new recording and we'll figure out exactly how long that was. Now the red light just turned off so we can start the test. 15, 16, 17. 18, 18 seconds. Well, this battery is pretty warm right now, so it's a good time to test the continuous draw. So we're gonna pull around 200 amps from this thing and see what happens. These heaters are getting hot. And we'll do this test for about 10 minutes. Actually, let's bump that up, that's too low. Hit a minute. <laughs> 10 minutes is the limit on here? Luckily the meter's still on and it's still going after 10 minutes. So pretty good. You probably have to get it to over temperature to trip this thing. Now for the final test, we're gonna do 800 amps with a carbon pile load tester. And we'll see if it can handle it for five or 10 seconds. That's what they advertised. Let's get up to 800 amps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Holy cow. Let's see what happens when it turns itself back on again. Oh, there we go. And it's back. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. Wow, that was good. So even though they advertised five and 10 seconds, it did over 10 seconds every time. And this battery is super hot. And so are these clamps, holy cow. But it actually worked. It worked as advertised, fantastic. Pretty good competition for Epic, I must say. Now I'm gonna teach you how to connect the SOK battery to a Victron inverter and the Serbo GX so you can have a full communication system in minutes. And don't let these cables fool you. This is very easy to do. Now the first thing you need is a Serbo GX. This connects to an inverter and to the SOK battery. This serves as the heart of the Victron communication system. And this is the Serbo GX screen. So first we're gonna plug it in down here. And it's a HDMI and a USB port. Next we need to power this thing up and it comes with a power cable and then we plug it in right here you can connect this to your inverter because it has a fuse or you can connect it to the fuse block of your 12 volt system next the SOK battery comes with its own communication cable and this will connect the battery directly to the Serbo GX we want to plug that in right here right below the USB ports and then we take this side and we connect it to the out plug so this one says in and this one says out so we're going to plug it in right here now the battery is connected, but we also want to connect this inverter. We're going to use an ethernet cable and we're going to plug it in where it says VE bus. We're going to plug this cable in on the other side. Now everything's connected. That's all you need to do. So you just plug in the cables and you fire it right up. You don't have to change any settings. And it says SOK battery and it shows the state of charge, the voltage and how much current it's consuming. And then the inverter has its own settings and voltages right here. If we click over to pages, we can see the whole system. So let's add a load and see what happens. And look at that, it shows the battery and the AC output. Now once it's connected to this, you can connect it to the internet and connect it to Bluetooth, and all sorts of other cool stuff. So check this thing out. Victron is expensive, but it's really nice. It's not UL listed though for most grid tie applications, but for off-grid stuff, a lot of people like them and they're super efficient. I like them a lot. They just cost a lot of money. So if you have money, go for it. If you don't, there's other options. Same size screws as the Epo Epic, Epic, Opox, whatever. <laughs> I hope I don't get cancer from doing this. That smells awful. Looks like an SOK battery. A little bit of an improvement from the old SOKs, but very similar design still. Like the cell holders and everything else looks just like the older ones. But the older batteries had screw terminals and these ones are welded. And there's heater pads on both sides of the packs. Also, there's two temperature sensors on the older ones. They would have only one. Now compare this to an Epic battery. This is simple, but it works. And it has a fire extinguisher, which is unnecessary for lithium iron phosphate, but they add it for code compliance. Now because this is a marine grade battery, it's waterproof. So all of these things are potted or epoxied into place. And the Epic battery on the inside is much fancier than this, but this one just works. I like simple. I like things that work, especially the app. These companies need to fix their apps. I know like three companies right now redoing their apps. It's ridiculous. How do you not have that done before the product is released? Now we're gonna see if the heater pads work and also the low temp charging protection. So first we need to connect this thing back together. SOK had a software problem on one of their batteries some years ago. But these companies learn pretty quick after their first major problem. And we're charging with 10 amps. Now we're gonna dip the sensor in the water. Ooh, there we go. The low temp charging protection does work. Now let's see if the heater's turned on. And it's not turning on. But this one has a second temperature sensor, so I probably have to get both of them cold. And the heaters are now on. Now with both heater pads, it pulls about 11 amps. But it keeps pulsing. There must be a reason why it's doing that, but I don't know why. But it does work. So I'm pretty sure we tested everything on this besides the fire extinguisher. I should test all of them. We should make a video where we test all of them and see if they actually work. So if you want a dead simple battery that just works and it's the same price as an Epic battery, this does not have the same build quality. The Epic battery is more fancy, but this one doesn't have any issues and it has really good cells. You don't have to worry about your battery being bricked when you're in the middle of nowhere, trying to do an over there air update with your Starlink or whatever. For now, for a marine grade battery, this is a pretty good option, especially the Surge. That was incredible how well it did. Now let's talk about things that I dislike. 
First off, the SOK battery does not have a 48 volt model. The Epic battery does. Next, there's mounting holes on the sides, but they're not on the front and the back. They should add them there as well. Next, these plugs are the same that you would see in a budget 12 volt battery. If you look at the Epic battery, it has really nice, almost like EV grade plugs. And I think they should step it up for this battery, especially considering the price, because this one costs as much as an Epic battery. So I think they should upgrade that. Next, they should have sent me out two so I can test the communication with two batteries. Next, I wanna test the app with multiple batteries. If I have multiple batteries connected in the Epic app, it will actually show them connected and it will show you your whole system and it can update all of the firmware. Obviously, they're having lots of issues with that, but I wonder if this has the same feature. That would be really cool to test. That's pretty much it for this video. I can't think of anything else to mention. Very simple, works really well. If you do have issues, please post it on the forum. I have a link under every single video. If you have any issues with Victron, EG4, SOK, whatever, please post it on the forum for all to see. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.